Good morning. It's time for Coach's Corner, live from McDonald's on Madison's Hilltop. I'm Tim Torrance. Thanks for tuning us in this morning. We do it every Saturday from the McDonald's across from the Madison High School. This morning, we go to high school boys basketball. I have Madison boys basketball coach Mark McFarland in. Coach, good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for being here today. Thank you for having us. I appreciate uh, it. It's a it's a rainy Saturday, but uh, it's not a not a very nice day out today. But uh, thank goodness you guys are in the gym, so <laughs> you don't have to worry about the elements outside. That's right. <clears throat> you look at where you're at now, two and one after a win last night. We'll kind of talk about this season in a little bit in another segment. Let's talk about a season ago, your first season at Madison. Uh, and that's kind of take it a step further from that. Let's maybe for those that may be new to the area don't know, kind of a little bit of your history and what brought you to Madison to coach boys basketball. Uh, coaching wise, I started coaching <clears throat> at a school north of Indianapolis, maybe 45 minutes north of Mississippi High School. Mm -hmm. uh, I was there three years and tried to turn around a program that I took over when they were two and 19, and we got that turned around, won our conference championship. Uh, the third year I was there and played in a sectional championship. And then um, went to Rensselaer Central from there, was there three years, <clears throat> and really just tried to jumpstart a program that was a little bit stagnant. And uh, went to the sexual championship twice, and uh, I had a really tough conference called the Hoosier Conference. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, they got a really good football conference up there, but it's just right. basketball's pretty good as well. Um, and then it came down here. Uh, what brought me to Madison is the, the conference, the Hoosier Hills Conference. I thought it was really cool, uh, a really great opportunity to play in a, in a challenging area and a challenging conference. You, know, you get to play in a lot of southern Indiana, you know, that southern Indiana uh, basketball gym feeling. Mm -hmm. You have some Southern Indiana rivalries down here that I thought I wanted to be a part of and, and see how it goes and just be around in the basketball area because there are two schools I was at wasn't really a, a basketball area and uh, we're a basketball heavy family so I'll kind of hear it, try it out and mm -hmm. see how it goes. You, when you when you go to to build a program or rebuild a program whatever the case may be What's your what's your criteria? I mean, other than you want to make the team better, you want to do things, you want to you want to win games and, and play in a sectional championship. But where do you start? Yeah, I, I think you got to start by instilling your culture and, and your value values into the players. And I think that stuff will will build and grow. And I think the big thing we do culturally wise is uh, we work really hard and make sure guys are in the gym working on things that <clears throat> they need to get better at. And um, we spend time in the weight room. We spend time in the gym. Uh, we make sure guys are turning assignments in because uh, off the cla off the off the courts is important as on the court. Mm -hmm. um, I think those things translate onto the court as well, and uh, make sure guys doing things right off the court and on the court. You 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 get a couple of stops. You you build programs. You you move on. It brings you to Madison, um, and, and you gotta you gotta start building again. Does does the process? And I've talked to coaches before who who like to start and build and then start to build again and start to build again. Is that process? Is it is it how challenging is it? Uh, it's, it's really challenging. Mm -hmm. uh, it's draining. Uh, it, it really it's taxing on your body and on your family and everything because you have to put so much time in early and uh, you're, you're caring for a lot of people uh, from the parents to the, to the third graders and everybody in the program you're caring for all those and you care about you know what they do on the weekends and you care about how they play and you're just trying to spend time with them and um, plant seeds and be in the gym with those guys and teach them everything you want to know and people have a lot of questions and you got to be available to a lot of people uh, so your family gets put on the, the back burner a little bit which you don't want right. um, but kind of happens so when you do it for you know, this is my eighth year in a row of trying to just start something. Mm -hmm. uh, it makes it taxing, so you don't want to move around too much. You want to be able to see your program grow. You want to be able to, uh, what is it, yield the results from what you what you put in place. And um, here, it's been awesome. We've had a lot of <clears throat> a lot of dads help out. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of moms help out the varsity level, but a lot of dads help out in those youth programs. They coach, you know, they coach uh, for four to eight hours, you know, a week, mm -hmm. and put a lot of time in themselves. And they're doing a good job of trying to take things I, I say or do on the court, and I can see them doing still it in their practices, and, that, and that's huge. When you got a youth program that runs some things, the varsity runs, and at least they're trying to, and mm -hmm. uh, they might take some ideas from you and go with it, that's really good. And uh, our middle school programs uh, spend a lot of time as well. Uh, last spring, we had kids going to Hanover. We had kids going to, you know, all the way to Marion, Indiana, and playing summer shootouts and you know dads are taking time out to do that and the families are putting money into it and the financial aspect from it so um, there's been a lot of help here and it's been really good we just want to see the see the results come and, and they're down the road and they're going to be there where do you where do you get your basketball knowledge from where does it where is it well, let's go back a little further with yeah. you <laughs> i've been really fortunate and i was like on the on the speed race or, or like the i can't remember the word <laughs> i'm looking for but 
I shot up to coaching ranks pretty quickly, and mm -hmm. I think I attribute that to the guys I work for and the guys I've been around. And, and um, I started coaching at 27 was my first game coaching. I got the job at 26, uh, and that's really, really fast and probably too fast. Right. If you go back and think on it, you're not ready, and you probably shouldn't have done it that fast. But you're young, ambitious, and you, you see other guys doing it. You're like, I can do that. I can yeah. do that. And uh, the guy I grew up playing for is Mark James. Uh, he just won a state championship, Ben Davis. And he was my coach. He's like my second father. And then um, after that, after, after um, college, <clears throat> I came back and helped him out for a year and a half. Then I went to Pike High School. And when you're around Pike High School, you just learn a lot of things about guards. And you learn a lot of drills and things that you could put in place. And you learn how to uh, develop a varsity program. And then I went to Newcastle, you know, which is one is like the basketball hub of Indiana. Sure. Uh, it's got the largest and largest field house in high school sports in the world. Uh, I went there, and there's a Hall of Fame coach who worked for there, um, Steve Bennett, mm -hmm. and uh, he was a college coach. So I learned a lot of things from him, like how to prepare for a game and the defensive game plans we use are a lot like he does. And uh, he was great. He's also a hard worker and uh, showed me some guard workout stuff. He's had guards to play at Butler, uh, you know, you know, the, from Dar Darnell Archie to uh, Bruce Haran to, uh, I don't know, there's a million, I can name yeah. Steve Alfred's from Newcastle. Sure. But, um, and Coach Bennett knows Sam Alfred, which is Steve's dad. So, they just know a lot of stuff. And then I, working for those two guys, you know, you can't work for two better guys in, right. in a short career like I had. Mm -hmm. So in five years working for two Hall of Fame guys, and you just think you don't want to work for somebody else that's not as good as people you've worked for right. in the past. So you don't want to go to a worse program. So uh, a job opened up that was <clears throat> 40 minutes from Newcastle. I thought it was a great opportunity to jump at it. Uh, I met my wife in Newcastle, so uh, she was there with us, and then she had a son. So I was like, well, let's go do this. Uh, became a coach, and uh, when you coach at a young age, you learn stuff quickly. Mm -hmm. um, you can, uh, so you got to be a sponge, and you learn a lot. Yeah. And uh, being a coach, you coach against great coaches in Indiana. Mm -hmm. um, I went through and looked at some of the coaches we've coached against and learned from those guys and learned different zones that they run and different man stuff they run. And, um, and then you go to coaching clinics. Mm -hmm. now, I'm a big student of the game. Uh, I watch it all the time, talk about it all the time. You know, it's my life. And uh, I really love basketball, so uh, pretty shallow when it comes to other things. <laughs> I just I just do basketball is all I do. So uh, I don't know. I think I'm okay, but I got a long way to go. You and then you you, you learn from other coaches. You you learn from the guys that, that you played for, or look up to, but you've also got to build your own repertoire of what you feel like is going to be good. That's been the hardest thing for me. Being so young, you talk to older coaches, and you know they always say less is more. Mm -hmm. uh, don't do as much. Just do what you do better. Is one of the big things they say, and as I'm getting younger, you're, I just told myself this summer, you know, I got to start finding play packages that are my play packages, or I got to start finding things that I like to do, and because um, we come in and switch things every year offensively, um, it helps for people not be able to scout or prepare for us. But what it doesn't do is allows our varsity guys to have a, a returning memory of what happened last year, and so I really got to start developing a play package I like or what we do and make things a lot simpler mm -hmm. and not try to do too much. And that was the first thing one of my assistants said this year, you know, I get excited. Our first man practice we had this year, we, uh, I was putting in plays. I was like, you know, I named my plays so the kids can know. So I get like football. Mm -hmm. So we'll give it an action and, or we'll give it a, uh, like a, we'll give it like a set name and then an action following it. Mm -hmm. So like we'll go Trojan and then Trojan ball screen. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I kept going. I kept naming plays because they're easy to remember. So coach, right. one of the coaches said, coach, that's enough. That's, that's <laughs> not. But keep it simple. And I was like, oh, yeah, okay. So we only got five man stuff in, man sets in there now, so mm -hmm. it'll be okay. Coach, you go 9-15 and 15 last year. Now, when you get to the end of the season and you get ready to go into, you know, summer ball and, and conditioning and all that good stuff. What do, you, what, do you, what do you summarize from year one that we got to do in year two to make ourselves better? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, we look at the final stats, look at guys coming back. Uh, during the spring, I organize workouts uh, twice a week, uh, basketball workouts where we can get better at skill stuff. I really spend time, individual skill stuff in the spring, things you can't work on during the summer or the, or the season. So we'll do simple things like passing and layups and, you know, uh, spot shooting. And uh, we do have some, it's just more fun. So we'll do some fun competition drills in the springtime. Just change up. We got a, a package of workouts in the spring. We got a package of workouts in the summer. And then we got a package of workouts in the fall. So we change them up each each season and then uh, just make sure it's different. So then we turn the summer work on more offensive uh, shooting. So we come off our offensive movements and shoot the basketball and we'll lift uh, three days a week. Um, but we always look at the stats. You know, I give them turnovers, free throws, and rebounds. We look at those and see where we need to improve at. 
um, the turnovers. You know, we want to make sure we keep them under 14 every game, mm -hmm. and we've done a good job of that. And then free throws, we want to shoot over 70 percent as a team. And then um, rebounds, we want to out rebound our opponent. But we look at those, and then we look at the scores of our opponents and see how the scores were, what games were close, and if we shot 70 percent from the field, I rebound our opponents and uh, turn the ball over less than 14 times, then could we won those games? And right. that's what we kind of look at to go forward and then where we need to improve at. And you, it, you, you mentioned, you know, weightlifting, weight training. Do you put a lot of emphasis on that? I do. I put more emphasis on it than, than what we are accomplishing. Like today we're going to lift because mm -hmm. uh, we had a game last night. We want to lift three times a week. I think we've lifted. It's only been a second week. Uh, we got all of our kids in weights class during the school day, so that's important. Um, but we've lifted maybe twice this year after school, and then we'll lift today. Uh, we need to lift more. Your, your, your theory is to be, be as strong uh, during the sectional as you were the first day of the season. Sure. A lot of teams get weaker because they don't lift, so that doesn't make any sense to be the strongest before the season starts and to be right. weak during the sectional. So you make sure you're strong or stronger in that sectional. Um, and just improve. These kids are growing every day. They're young teenagers, so they're still growing and they can still get stronger. So make sure we're lifting. You have kids playing multiple sports. They only, you know, they don't only do basketball. They do baseball or track or football or whatever. Yep. How hard is that to, to, for you as a coach to encompass everybody in the off season? It's really hard. Uh, a school like our size and a school that offers so many athletics. You know, some schools don't offer much sports in the fall. Some schools don't offer football. Sure. So those guys aren't playing football. Well, our guys are playing football. Mm -hmm. You know, we got you know half our roster playing football or more. And so well, when I come to the school, I make sure or I try to address and let let the football coach know. You know, I want our guys all lifting together. Mm -hmm. uh, make sure our basketball and football guys are lifting together because we got our guys we're sharing. So we don't want guys going to lift football. And then coming back in the afternoon, have to lift for basketball. Right. So we just do the same lift and get in the same time. So that kind of helps them, help them out, helps them out that way. And then uh, talk to the other coaches and make sure the schedules are on on, on par with everybody else to make sure that we're sharing the athletes. Um, the football goes in the afternoon. We might go seven o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. and get our shooting in. Uh, I'm on the shoot on the team on the team uh, team camps and the shootouts. Just talk to him. You know, he went. To, he had a really great opportunity. Uh, the football coach did. He went to Canton, Ohio, for Hall of Fame football this summer. And you just got to share athletes. You know, if there's guys that are major football guys, then they're going to go to the Canton, Ohio workout. Mm -hmm. That's fine. They can miss. Um, a guy like Luke Allman's a big-time golfer. Yeah. Uh, a guy like Zach Forner is a big-time baseball player. Sure. And so when they got the baseball or golf stuff going, you got to let them go to that stuff because that's important. And you don't want to lose them from your program, so you got to make sure that they're doing what they like as well. And just, you know, showing a time commitment to basketball, make sure that they're there when they can be and uh, caring for each other and, um, just getting better. You know, sometimes, and, and the coaches have said this to me over the years, you know, sometimes we have to realize as coaches that they are high school kids. Yeah, and, and right now in Indiana, uh, we're killing our high school kids. Uh, and we try not to do too much. You know, we come shoot for an hour and then play for an hour, and that's it. Uh, so two hours um, a day, and then the guys that aren't there aren't there. But if you have a kid that plays three sports, and every sport's working out during right. the day, so basketball goes two hours, lifting for an hour and a half, football goes two hours, and then uh, baseball goes to yeah. a game. Yeah. I mean, that's all. Day. That's like a full-time job. Right. And, and it's a lot, and it's a constraint on the, on the parents too. So I don't know if there's an answer to it um, other than, um, you know, kids, if they want to play three sports, they're going to put a lot of time. And if you play two, it's going to be rough. And that's just how it is. I think um, kids got to make decisions and parents got to make decisions. And that's just part of life. Um, you got to find out what you want to do. And if you want to do it, if you want to play all three, you got to practice all three. Yeah. You can't just play. You can't, you can't just play. <laughs> that's right. It'd be nice if you could do that, but it doesn't work that way. Do you like kids to play multiple sports? I do. I think it's fun. I mean, it's a high school experience. Mm -hmm. And so I think you should definitely play all of them as a freshman. I would tell the, same, the kids the same thing. Yeah. You know, give it a try. Right. Play freshman and then you should play JV if you can and then once you become a junior or senior if you if you know if you're if you're not in the rotation and you don't want to play I understand you know right. go focus on your main sport sure um, but if you're good enough to be in the rotation of every sport then keep doing it because right. it's only you only get this with chance for four years mm -hmm. uh, so do the best you can but I tell all kids if you think you're not any good you should at least try your freshman year right I think you should make the coach cut you <laughs> <laughs> make the coach cut you from the sport and uh, put the pressure on the coach a little bit and but you got to practice and try it. You just can't show out. I'm here to practice. I'm here to play. You gotta, you gotta work at it. All right. Kids typically will work hard, especially you. I mean, you kind of know your kids that first one in the gym, last one to leave. You, you, you got their gym rats. You got to run them out of the gymnasium. You like kids like that. But when kids are doing other things and they're trying to to bide their time in each sport, it's a little bit different, difficult for a coach to. Okay, I know you're gonna be there. I know you're gonna be here. But we're gonna try to get our work in anyway. Yeah. Yeah. It's so in the summer, you know, I say we work on our offensive movement stuff. 
And so it's okay if a kid misses it. It won't take us. We're not doing five on zero stuff like that. Right. So it's all individual, but work on our work on our offensive things. So when they miss, it's fine. Like we had Jason Carson running everywhere this year because they're at football, and then Jace has to work. Mm -hmm. And so it, we just had kids running everywhere. And so if they had to miss, they had to miss. So we just keep going, like not skip a beat. Mm -hmm. And then the kids that are there get work in. The kids that aren't. You know, they just let me know. Yeah. Like that's one big thing. Communication is a big one. Right. Uh, I think communication between coaches, communication with the administration, and then with, even with the players. Uh, the players got to let you know where they're at. Yeah. I don't let players just say, oh, I got football this day and not tell me again. Right. So the day of, they're supposed to send me a text or a phone call and tell me where they're at so I know. And the parents say, hey, where was my kid at? I can say, he told me he was there. Right. And so they can't can't play that game, but they got to let me know where they're at, and then we just got to move on. I'm like, the, you know, just like their father, you got to right. tell me where you're at. Coach, 2-1 uh, this early part of the season. Got a conference win last night over Jennings County. Uh, lost to Southwestern, but back-to-back -back victories. Went over Trinity Lutheran and again Jennings County last night. Through three games. Your report card. I think it's pretty good. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, no one likes losing games. <laughs> <laughs> if we say here, well, here's the thing about this losing this losing the first game of the season. If we won the first game of the season and won these last two, our kids would think there's no improvements needed. Right. We have uh, we had a, we played the first game. We had some things we didn't do very well. We also didn't shoot the ball very well. Mm -hmm. If we make some shots and we uh, in the, we didn't we didn't let a lot of them three runouts in the first quarter and we don't give them 22 free throws we right. probably win the game right that's, two, that's we lost by 15 but we got, got scored by a line by 15 right um, so there's some things that I can tell the players that we did not do very well and they'll listen mm -hmm. but if we win that game they might not believe that we're not doing a very good job right so we've improved the last two games I think defensively last night was our best effort sure. we played pretty good defense this year uh, like I said they got 22 from the line the first game you take that away that's only 38 points we allowed in game play right uh, so 30 is pretty good. Uh, last night we allowed 46, um, and our defense is going really well right now. Uh, I think offensively it's going as well as we shoot the ball. Mm -hmm. So when we shoot the ball really well, we look really good. When we don't shoot it, we don't look very good. And last night in the first game, those two games together, I thought we took some shots that we weren't, we weren't supposed to shoot. Right. I'm going to tell a kid not to shoot. I think you guys know I am now. We shoot the ball as soon as we see the rim. Not a bad shot on the floor. So, But last night in the first game of the season, I thought we took multiple threes that we probably should not have taken. Mm -hmm. And we'll talk about today on film. Uh, but we got to shoot within our rhythm of our offense. The way we play is, is a real rhythm-based offense. So you got to keep in rhythm, keep the ball moving, get guys when they're ready to shoot it and, and knock it down. Uh, but defensively, we're doing fine. Offensively, we're doing okay. Uh, the ball's not moving and popping like I want it to move. Um, and we're not driving it off. So last night, we had a couple good possessions. Uh, you saw we, we drove it, drove it, got a ball screen. Cooper got in there, got a three-point play or something like that. So right. those possessions are really, really good. Uh, the ones I don't like when the ball stalled, uh, the San Antonio Spurs say, don't be a ball stopper. You mm -hmm. know, when that ball is swinging, 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 and somebody catches it and it stops, and everybody's like, oh, why is it stopping? That'd right. be a ball stopper. Right. And so now you see the rhythm's out, defense resets up, and now we got to go back through it again. Mm -hmm. um, so we're doing okay. Uh, I want to see this first half of the season go really well. Uh, I think the first half of the season set up for us to have some success. Uh, we can go through, you know, go 10-1, 10-2, 9-3, uh, whatever it is, and be really good. That back half is brutal. Yeah. Uh, you got the Floyd Central, New Albany, Greensburg, Silver Creek, um, and Columbus East is back there somewhere. Right. So all, all, all the really, really uh, busters are in the second half of the right. season. Uh, but it's going really well. I think the guys – our, our players really, really like each other. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the coaches said, I didn't know the guy, these guys liked each other so well. I said, yeah, they like each other a lot. I said, they have a lot of fun. I said, we yeah. laugh, we, hunt, we hang out around here, right. we have fun, listen to music, um, enjoy each other's company, try to make it a, a family atmosphere, try to make it uh, more fun. Because like I said, you only got four years to do this, and I want them to enjoy it more right. than anything. Right. Yeah, and you, you, you look at, too, um, you, you're building for February. You're building for the end of February, trying to get better for sectional, you, and you're trying to make improvements. But you're also trying to uh, – guys are trying to identify what their role is on the team. And sometimes it's a little easy, more easier said than done. Yeah, and I, why don't I go back and watch films? So when I went back and watched last year, we, we talked about this all the time. I don't know those guys. Mm -hmm. And so I look on a film, I'm like, why is this guy in this position? But that's because I didn't know them. Right. I can just go out what people tell me. And then as you go as you go through the season, you guys saw the, the, the rotation stuff changed and the, and the people playing the positions changed and things moved on. This year I look at the same thing. I'm just I look at trying to figure out the rotation. So last night I finally felt comfortable with the rotation right. uh, of when guys are subbing in, when guys are subbing out, who they're subbing in for, what position they're going into. Mm -hmm. In practice we do a good job of uh, the guys choose where they're coming in, where they're going out, and then um, be able to run sets and put guys in places where we want them at. 
and these guys are doing a good job being interchangeable, mm -hmm. which I never had before. Right. We got four guards and one post guy, and our post guys, you know, 5'10", Carson Livingston, and 5'10", <laughs> Jay, Jay Shum. So our post guys are short, um, but they have roles, mm -hmm. and they do a good, good job with the role. Uh, Jace had a couple of nice drives last night. Uh, got blocked, but he had some nice drives, and a, he had penetrating pitch in there. But, um, but those other four positions are interchanged with all four of those guys. Right. So we run these, uh, I call them entries to our offense. They're able to go different different spots, which is really going to mess up the defense eventually down the road. And um, I thought our entries would work better last night than what they did. Um, but we still got to clean some things up on them. You, you, you Looking at Jennings County team last night that was that was big and physical, and we, we talked last night uh, in the post game about, uh, you, you know, drawing contact, going to the foul line, making free throws, uh, driving in, dishing out, uh, just simple things. Things. And it goes back to, I mean, this, we've talked about this a thousand times it, throughout the course of the years about bigger teams don't necessarily mean you're going to have trouble in the post if you play it the right way. Yeah, so, you know, everybody says get the ball in the middle uh, for us. And that's true. We want the ball in the middle, sure. but we want the ball in the middle off of the drive. Right. We drive the ball heavily in this offense. And uh, we want those guards to be able to drive the ball. And then we want kick out threes. Uh, the best three point shot is from the inside out. Mm -hmm. And so back in the day, you would throw the ball to the post and get it kick out three to the right. guard. Well, we just do it a little differently. We drive in the lane and kick it out to a guard for three off guard to guard passes or something like that. And right. the post player can set ball screens and those things. And so that's just kind of how it works. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, we definitely want the ball aside. I think the bigger I think the bigger teams have trouble guarding us. Right. Uh, last year, what we saw late in the year was they weren't helping off of our penetration because our penetration guys weren't beating anybody to the rim. I think with, these, with this lineup with Nick and Cooper, um, Luke Miller and Blair and Luke Allman could take a bigger guy. Is getting matchups with Carson Livingston and uh, Mason. Mm -hmm. Mason Welsh is a big part of this this year. Right. Uh, so if you think back last year, he's catching the ball where Ian Strauss caught the ball. Right. And when Ian Strauss caught the ball, he could go in there uh, slowly and make a basket a little bit sometimes. But Mason's going to have a guy like from Jennings County last night on him. And then they're gonna, he's going to be able to drive those guys quicker sure. and beat those bigger guys. So when the bigger teams play us, I kind of like it when they try to go man mm -hmm. and then because they can't guard us man to man and then right. we get open threes. Last night, late in the game, we uh, saw their guarding Carson Livingston with their big post player. And you see the ball screen, Carson Livingston, they're switching on Cooper. And so you got Cooper on a post guy, and that's what we want. Then we spread right. the floor, and then they got to try to guard Cooper one-on-one. -on -one. Right. He got a couple three-point plays late, and right. they got to the rim late. So we do some different things, but it's fun. Yeah, it, it, it looked like everybody was having a lot of fun last night. Coach, you, let's talk real quick before we wind things down. Hoosier Hills Conference, you mentioned Floyd Central. They're, they're pretty good. Oh, yeah, Floyd's really good. I think I think they could represent the South in the state championship mm -hmm. if everything goes the right way. Them or Jeff's really good. Yeah. Uh, Blue the South's going to be a lot better by the end of the year. Um, I don't know many other teams uh, down in New Albany. is probably not probably not the same level as uh, Floyd and uh, Jeffersonville. Right. And I can't think of any other 4A teams in the South. It's pretty limited. But uh, I think Floyd's really good. He got one of the best coaches in the state of Indiana. Uh, he's coached in college before. Uh, he knows how to develop a program. Knows how to develop uh, a game plan and those things. And they're so big. And they got an Indiana All Star sure. and, and, and a, I think it's Kobe Barnes. Mm -hmm. um, and then they got a couple of other guys that are just role players and they're big and strong. And uh, they run a great switching man to man, which causes us trouble. Sure. Um, when they're when they're big and athletic, yeah. and they switch, then you, it causes our offense big time trouble. So we'll do some different things. But um, the Hoosier Hills Conference, um, you want to finish the top half every year. Sure. Last year I thought we had a chance if we'd beat Seymour, and beat uh, somebody else. Can't remember the other team I'm thinking of. We could have been like in the, in the fifth fifth spot. Sure. Um, but we got Jennings already this year. We want to be able to beat uh, Seymour, Columbus East, and those other guys and make sure we're up right. in the top half, top four or five of them, and then um, give those top three um, uh, the uh, best game we possibly can give them right. and see if, we can get, see if we can sneak one. You know, I think New Albany has never – they lost one time to Madison in the history, of the, in the, history yeah. of the conference. So we'll make sure we're there and making sure they know we're aware of them. I thought last year we prepared for them. I thought last year we did the best we could. Right. And uh, gave them a game that we could. You right. Know, we fought. We didn't lay down and say, oh, here come. Yeah. Beat us by 100. Right. You know, we fought. Um, did a good job. So we'll make sure we're giving those three teams, you know, the best we can and see if we can see them be there at the end of the game and see what happens. Coach, we appreciate you coming in this morning. Cubs 2-1. and one. They're off until next Friday night. And that I want to mention that real quick, too. We talked about this before we went on. One double weekend in the month of December, unlike the past several years where there's three. Yes, and that attributes to like our administration. Mm -hmm. You know, I always tell how great our administration is. Mr. Brown Kell, Mr. Gasway, and then and then our new superintendent um, is awesome as well. 
he's came in and, and done great things for us and really supported. He comes to our games. Um, and then, you know, Mr. Gasly and Mr. Grill have, um, you know, came to road games. Mr. Brown Keller, real supportive. I love our administration. I think they do a great job. And, um, I think they got a lot of good people in place right now, and I hope it stays there, and they can, we can kind of cultivate this and watch Madison grow into something really, really great because I think there's a lot of great people here now, and I think there's a lot of great things going on. Um, but our administration allowed the, allowed the schedule changes, and uh, I think it suits us better. Mm -hmm. uh, where we, The way we try to play a little bit, it gives us a, a night off of rest, and we can put everything into one night, right. and then our preparation is, is pretty detailed. And so when you prepare for Friday night and you try to have a game on Saturday, you're not so prepared for Saturday night. And if you lose the Friday game, then you might lose the Saturday game. Sure. Set you up for a bad, bad weekend. Um, we do have some double weekends to prepare us for a sectional atmosphere, right. um, the preparation-wise of it. But I like having one game as many times as we can. Right. And then in February is a beautiful schedule. You go Tuesday, Friday, Tuesday, Friday, Tuesday, right. Friday. Yeah. And that's sectional. So yeah. we're getting it ready. Uh, Mr. Bronkell is doing a great job helping us out and doing things we want to do. Um, I just look forward to the future. Again, Cubs 2-1 and one going to South Dearborn. First road game for the Cubs next Friday night, of course, will be there. Coach, appreciate you coming in this morning. Hey, thank you very much, and thanks, McDonald's, for the breakfast. All right, again, that's Coach Mark McFarland, Madison Boys basketball coach. That's it from McDonald's. I want to thank our engineer in studio, A.J. Bramer. I'm Tim Torrance. We'll see you next time. Live from McDonald's on Madison's Hilltop for Coach's Corner on Works 96.7. Sponsored in part by Chandler Chevrolet. 600 Clifty Drive, Madison, Indiana. McDonald's, 744 Clifty Drive, Madison, Indiana. Anderson Sales and Service, 2914 Clifty Drive, Madison, Indiana. <laughs>